Hey guys, how's it going? Man, I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're doing great. Hey, I'm going to throw a video on here today. I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment. Uh, I had bought a trunk to replace the one that's on the 04 GT. And it was a real nice trunk. And through some foolishness of my own doing, I allowed the corner of that trunk to get broken off. So I hastily went out and bought another trunk and I'm not quite sure if it's in as good as shape, but either way, I'm gonna to try to repair the corner of the trunk that I originally bought. And I'm gonna be using some uh, pig epoxy putty. I'm no auto body man by no means, but I'm gonna see if I can fix the corner of this trunk and make it a, a functional trunk again and maybe even use it on this car. So let's see what we can do with it and hopefully we can learn something together. All right, guys. So guys, what I'm gonna be working on today, this is my trunk that I'm still pretty sick over. I had it on the table and I had it standing up, uh, not like the sharpest tool in the shed. I turned my back to get something off the fender and a good old breeze come through, just a real strong gust, and I heard a tumble. This fell over, hit the concrete, and chipped the corner of this hood off. A good friend of mine suggested this pig epoxy putty. And uh, so we're gonna clean this area. We're gonna sand it a little bit, get the paint off. I'm gonna see if I can uh, get this epoxy putty. You have to knead it together. Uh, and I'm gonna see if I can fix this corner and uh, hey, you know, the hood's already, you know, in foul shape. So how much more could I mess it up, right? So I'm going to see what I can do with it. Uh, this will be an experiment for me for sure and an experiment for the rest of us too maybe. But I'm going to clean this surface up. I've already wire brushed the bottom. But I'm going to clean this surface up and I'm going to see if I can get this epoxy putty on this edge. And then see if I can form it and make it look decent. All right, we'll see how it goes, guys. All right, guys, I got my little sanding block here with some 80 grit. I tell you what, I seen on, on another YouTube video, these uh, sanding blocks with the uh, Velcro. I never knew it was a thing until I watched a YouTube video, seen somebody else talking about it, but really handy. Velcro's on, don't slip off. So we're going to scuff this paint. I'm going to get it scuffed down here because I want, I want that... Um, Epoxy to have something to hold on to here. And like I said, guys, <laughs> I'm not, I don't claim to know what I'm doing here. This is new to me. So, this is, this is going to be something new. I'm very lightly touching it. That white that you see there, that's the clear coat coming off. but it's got to have a clean surface to adhere to. And it's not gonna adhere to the smooth paint, I wouldn't think. So for any of you guys that's ever used this, I may be doing something in vain here, I don't know. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it for sure. I'm gonna get a, some alcohol and clean this area off and uh, before I try the epoxy putty. This is just an experiment, uh, just to see what I can do with this epoxy putty and uh, just see what we got here. So I do not claim to know anything professionally about this. This is just an experiment I'm going, an experiment that I'm going to try. So you're supposed to cut a piece off, and I was told by my friend to keep this end cap, peel it off, and uh, try to put it back on. He said it helps uh, helps preserve it. Let 
was a little bit of a paper left on there, so I'm going to get a piece about this big. I have no idea if this is a big enough piece or not. Maybe too big. May not be big enough. I don't know. Put the end cap back on here. Get this back around it. And get it put back in the tube. But it says to it says to knead this until it's a solid color, no streaks. So let's get it all kneaded together there until it looks like a solid color, like the directions say. But it says you have three to five minutes. It's really sticky. Now I might should have had gloves, the oil on my hands. Maybe I should have had some gloves on, guys. I don't have any at the moment. And who knows, the oil off my hands may affect this. So I, I don't have any rubber gloves. I need to get some, so I suggest using rubber gloves. Don't do as I do. Okay, that's looking pretty solid. something this way Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let this set. Whew, it's already getting very, very hard. I'm gonna let this set. But Especially me not knowing what I'm doing here. I have <laughs> low confidence, guys. And it's no part of the epoxy. It's uh, me not knowing what I'm doing. So. All right. We're going to leave it at that. I'm gonna leave that at that. I'm gonna let it harden. This is already rock hard. This is hot. It's already rock hard. So, yeah. Uh, this is the piece we shaved off because it had the paper on the end. That is very warm. The chemicals are working and it is. You can hear it. It's already rock hard. So guys, what I'm attempting to do right here, I've actually seen people do with Bondo. Right before the Bondo gets hard, they get what they call like a cheese grater. And they shave it off in pretty good sized chunks. That saves on sandpaper. It also saves on uh, time. So I'm taking this razor blade and I'm just going very gently across the top of this. And on the sides. And I'm just trying to form it. It's almost hard but I can just get it shaved off here. So I'm going to try to form it with this razor blade. And then I'll sand it to the uh, shape that I want it.
So guys, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take my sanding block with the 80 grit and I'm just very lightly sanding on it. I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure because I don't want to go too far. So I'm going to take this 80 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to shape it and kind of get it the form that I want. And uh, just being very gently, not putting a lot of pressure, just trying to get the kind of shape that I'm looking for. Just gently, slightly working this razor along the edge, just cutting this off, uh, trying to make sure that I don't, you know, get into the original fiberglass. Just kind of shaving it, get it where you can see it. Sorry, it's hard to do this one-handed, but I just want to be very careful with this razor. <clears throat> so when I get this off, so when I when I get this off, I'm going to take a, a die grinder, and I'm I'm not going to go real deep, but I want to kind of try to keep the factory groove. But I'm not I'm going to try not to cut all the way through, because I like the idea of this because this corner got flexed. I like the idea of some of it being in this groove. You won't never see it. We're going to make it look as best as we can, but uh, I think we can make a functional hood out of this again i really do so i'm just gonna keep shaving and just taking my time so guys what i'm gonna attempt to do now is i'm gonna take this cutting wheel and i'm gonna try to go in with this uh factory edge here but i don't know if i need to cut it all the way through because i kind of like the idea I'm not sure if how well this is bonded on the end, but I kind of want to try to keep in this factory groove here, go around and make an indention so it'll, you know, so it'll look way more presentable than, than this right here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, just make a little indention all the way around here. Let's see how that works out. Cross your fingers. So what I was after there, guys, I was trying to get this little ridge built back in so it wouldn't look so odd when it gets painted. Uh, this hood, as you can tell, it's two pieces clamped together. Um, I'm, I don't want this open back up. <clears throat> I'm going to leave it solid. Uh, I just wanted to get a little bit of the ridge back. I think we got that. I'm going to get a little bit finer sandpaper, clean this up a little bit, and we'll see how it looks. All right, guys, I cleaned it up a little bit with the uh, finer sandpaper. Um, I think that's about as good as we're going to get it. So I'm going to clean this area, prep it up right here for a little bit of primer. And I'm just going to clean this area up right here. All right, guys, I think we got that looking pretty good. It is the underside of the hood. And like I say, I'm going to leave this filled in. I just like the support of this because of the uh, <laughs> traumatic uh, incident it had uh, to keep these two corners together. All right, guys, so I got a little bit of a dip right here. <clears throat> I've got it kind of rounded like I want. 
I'm going to put a little glazing putty in this. This might could be filled up with primer. It feels a little deep to me. I'm going to throw a little glazing putty in here. Uh, may not be the right thing to do. I am not a body man. But I want to get this filled in right here, a little spot right here. And, uh, and then I'll put some primer over it after I smooth that down and we'll see what we got. All right, I waited a little while for this to harden up, <clears throat> and I just kind of lightly scraped over it with the uh, with the 80 grit. Now I've got some uh, 320 here, and uh, we're gonna just give it a light going over here. Let's see how this looks. Not putting no pressure at all on it trying to there's a little bit of a flat ridge there it's a little bit of a flat ridge and i'm trying to keep that goodness gracious i'm not a body man for sure but anyways you can see where we had those low spots right there again no pressure at all just kind of the weight of the block following that contour there get out here a little bit where I plan on throwing the primer on there so I can feather it in Whew, I tell you guys that feels that feels pretty daggum smooth I'm gonna tell you all right, guys, got my primer shook up from Dupli Color. It's a two-in-one filler sandable primer. Uh, I wanted some epoxy primer. They just didn't have it in town. So I figured for just this little corner, this is in the whole experimental deal anyway. We will see uh, how well it works. Let that flash over. Ooh, I can see it already flashing over a little bit there. Spray's good. This dupli color sprays pretty good. So okay guys, I put a couple of coats on there and let them flash over. I'm gonna sand it down <clears throat> and see if we need to add another coat. But um, got a few things here that I'm seeing. So I'm gonna do a light sanding on this and uh, I'll speed it up for you guys. You don't have to sit there and watch me do the whole thing. All right, guys, there's the finished product. Tell me what you guys think. I'm absolutely nobody man, but uh, I think that's looking pretty good. So guys, when I found this trunk in the, in the junkyard, it, was, it looks like original paint. And the reason we did that is because you can see this, this here, this has some serious issues going on. It was gonna take some serious body work to get this fixed and I just didn't like what I'm seeing here. That's a big dip. So I found this hood and I was just, I was just so glad. And then I foolishly left it on that table. As I told you, the wind come through, blew it over, chipped that corner. I talked to a couple of fiberglass people. They were like, Hey, you probably be better off just to get another hood you know, as much as it would cost. I went out and I found this hood cause I was kind of in a time crunch same 
car that this uh, hood that we have and the door that we have right there, it came off the same car. But there was one thing I noticed when I was getting it, <clears throat> and, I, and I want you to be able to see. If you look real good, maybe I can catch the light just right. Someone's painted on this hood. See how terrible that looks? Can you see? But one of the things that puzzled me, if you can see it in there, you can almost see in here the same thing was going on with this that was going on with this. I do not believe this is as bad underneath that paint as this because that is the hood that come off the same car. Someone had painted the hood as well. Even though they done a kind of a crappy job of it, it probably protected it. If you can get, let's see, can you see that? Can you see that line in there? Can you see that? Like the same thing we got going on here. And that always scared me, even though I, uh, this trunk looks pretty good. You don't know what somebody's done with the paint underneath. It could have been worse than this. So anyways, so now at this point, how do you guys think this would hold up versus this trunk? I would much rather use this trunk. Uh, I don't see, you know, there'll be, this trunk could be slammed here and there, you know, but I, I, I don't see, this felt so solid. Uh, I mean, it felt really solid. I think it turned out pretty good. So in the comments, guys, I'm asking you, would you trust this and use this trunk that I really, really want? Or would you use this trunk that still, you know, we don't know what's under there, but I believe it's okay, but it's going to need some work as well. All right, guys, let me know which one of these trunks would you use, the maroon one or the gray one that I just repaired. I know my pick, but I want to hear from you. Please comment below which one of these trunks you would use if it was your car. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up. Thanks for the likes, thanks for the shares, and definitely thank you for the subscribers. I can't say enough to you guys. All right, guys, I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Thank you all.